Good morning, St. Francis, and Merry Christmas. It is Thursday, January the 7th, 2021, the 14th day of Christmas, the Thursday after Epiphany. Coming to you from the passageway between Siena Hall over here and the gymnasium over here. A nice little tree-lined passageway. Uh, what stands out, though, always is this great holly bush right behind me. Uh, one of several great holly bushes that we have on this campus. Beautiful uh, trees. So after a tumultuous day in the nation's capital and after a tragic day in the nation's capital, does the gospel, does Christmas, does God have anything to say you know, to us or about this? And of course, God does, Christmas does. That's the whole point of believing, that's the whole point of faith, is that it has to respond to what it is that we experience and live in a daily way, not just to get us off this rock of a planet into some heavenly after home. No, it does speak to what happened. The first reading from John, uh, from the first letter of John that we've heard all throughout this Christmas season, that has led us all throughout this Christmas season, says something very important. Because you cannot say that you love God and hate your brother or sister. Because to say that you love God and to hate other people means that you are a liar and that you do not love God. Loving God only manifests itself to the extent and the ways in which we love one another. We cannot isolate God away from everything else that we experience, nor can we isolate God from the ups and downs of what it means to have a relationship with each other. Something important to remember as we move away from these events that happened yesterday in our nation's capital. The second thing, though, is that in Luke's Gospel, we hear the narration of Jesus coming into the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth and reading from the prophet Isaiah that he has come to bring freedom to captives, liberty and sight to the blind, to help the, to make the oppressed go free, to bring glad tidings to those who are poor. Jesus says that all of these things are now being fulfilled in the midst of the people who hear them. And they hear them, and they think that, oh, he's just so eloquent, he's so wonderful. But as he goes on to speak a little bit more, in the next, very next chapter, they want to go out and kill him. Because he says, again, too much that people don't want to hear, that people don't want to believe, comes with the cost of bringing liberty to captives and helping the oppressed go free and bringing a year of favor in the Lord to all of those who are poor and downtrodden. And yet that is always our goal as believers in this world, to think differently to never ever stop struggling and fighting and urging others to care for one another, to care for those who are most in need of our care, to recognize in this world where there is pain and suffering and hurt and to work with all that we have to alleviate that pain and suffering in whichever way that we can. That is our mission as believers. It is not basically just to pray that we get off this rock of a planet and get into some heavenly afterlife. That remains to be seen with God. But the mission that God gives us here and now is to work, to be instruments of hope and healing in a hurting world. And we have much that we have seen in these past months that have shown us how hurting this world is. We need to act in ways that embrace love and charity so that all of us might find a place within this world, know that we are valued and cared for, and know that it is God who makes all this possible. May the Lord give you peace.